Hey, Jim, how are you? Good. It's good to be here. Yeah, it's amazing talking to you. First time ever. Like, I've yes. been following your blog, your website, and, and even your podcast. You write very insightful articles, and your experience is adequately reflected in what you write and you are like content machine. Like you've been churning articles at a very fast pace in like last two, three months. Yes. So before Thank we you. get on with the, you know, the topic of discussion, why don't you give a small introduction about your, I guess, long online life? <laughs> well, I started like everybody else. I had a, a, a dream of of working for myself and building something that would have a positive impact on uh, my life and, and the people around me. And so I did that by writing and publishing information and then got into website development in order to take that information and get it out there to the world. And then all the missing pieces that I needed to do that in a better way were added as the years went on. So here we are today. Uh, 20 years later, and it's been a, a very interesting journey for me. You were not going to mention 20 years, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> so it's <laughs> awesome, man. Okay, so now you've been doing a lot of things in the online world, and obviously you have had your successes and failures. We yes. all do. <clears throat> so what we are going to focus today on this you know, episode is the tools the options, the business options, because there are a lot of tools, there are a lot of business options thrown at you when you are in the online world. But which option to choose for your business, which tool to use, choose for your business to you know, build a solid business strategy that will help you in succeeding because everyone wants to succeed. But before we get on with the things that you help you focus on these tools and options, let's talk about the other opposite part, which is distractions. Now, yes. if I compare online world 10 years back to now, distractions have multiplied by 1000 times or maybe even more. So there's so much thrown at you. How does a person in the online world remain less distracted in today's time? Well, um, uh, for me, I, I'll just tell you um, a little bit about how I handled it. Mm -hmm. I, I had to get to the point where I was disgusted with how I was spending my time and the results that I was getting with all of this time that I was investing. And so um, much like when you go through school, you learn a lot of things, but you don't always take what you're learning seriously. You're more interested in talking to your friends and meeting new people. And then somewhere along the line, you recognize that what you're doing is going to affect the rest of your life. And you either become serious about it or you drop out. And so education was stressed in my family uh, quite a bit. And so I found myself repeating this in the online world. I was uh, more interested in talking with people and meeting people than I was doing the hard, deep work. And so what happens is as you mature and as you get older, um, the people who don't take what they're doing seriously start to drop off. And if you're going to compete with the people who are on the next level, then you have to just, I hate to use the word, but it's uh, buckle down yeah. and really get serious about what you're doing. And that's when you begin to identify the things that are offsetting you. Um, because we make excuses and we're all basically the same. Um, mm -hmm. I can make the best excuses and I can convince myself and justify almost anything. Yeah. So I finally had to get to the point where I realized that time is passing me by and I'm not accomplishing the things that I want to accomplish. And, you know, you get set in these patterns and it takes for some people disgust before they're at a place where they're willing to make the changes they need to make. Yeah. Other people, it takes depression before they get to the point where they realize I'm not going. Yeah, you need to fall down to get up, you know. And once you get up, you need to figure out whether you want to walk or run. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And so um, once you recognize that, then you can identify where, where what's stealing from your life and what's adding to your life. Now, this is on the, you know, bigger macro level. Let's talk about the little deeper micro level now. Online alerts. We have mobile phone. 
tablets, computers, you get bombarded with alerts from all kinds of websites, even email messages. Now I have a weird way of, you know, keeping my sanity. Like when I have, I'm taking my meal or I'm in the afternoon nap or at night sleep, my internet on my phone is off. So no yes. one, mess- I don't get, and even the phone is, you know, flipped down and facing down and sitting on the side. Like I can't even see if by chance someone messaged me and the internet remained on. So it for me, it's like complete shutdown. How do you handle your digital alerts from intruding your on offline life? You know, I'm shut down almost all the time. Uh, for example, I don't have any alerts on my phone. If someone texts me, I'll hear the sound. If they call me, I'll hear the ring. Otherwise, I have zero alerts. Um, when I go out, my phone is disconnected from the internet. Again, no alerts. I'm completely with the people that I'm with. You're and exactly I, like I, me. I mean, we're not brain surgeons. Yeah. We're, we don't work in an emergency room where we're going to get a call where we have to drop what we're doing and come save someone's lives. We're business people. And we got into this so that we could control our lives and not have it controlled by us. I, I had a flip phone until like three years ago and people used to laugh at me carrying this old You're fashioned not phone around. Smart enough, right? You're not smart enough for smartphone, right? <laughs> Once I was in the uh, parking lot and I asked an older woman coming out of the store, she's probably 80. I said, do you know if there's another such and such store in this neighborhood? I didn't realize this one was closed. And she said, here, let me look it up on my smartphone. <laughs> but here was an older person looking up. And I felt, uh, you know, kind of funny. But uh, no, I, I, I practiced a, a disconnected well, style. Well, you, your answer is exactly what I follow. And I've been pretty successful with that because I see a lot of people saying, you know, I've been, I'm always on the phone. Like I'm always checking Facebook, checking emails, but it's, it's in your hand. It's your phone. You can easily control it if you want to. Again, the thing comes in whether you want to make excuse or you want to actually do something about your life. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now let's switch from distractions to, you know, business paths and options. Now there are, so, so many ways of making money on the internet and build your business empire on it. I'm sure you've tried so many ways and been successful on at least few of them. Now, how should a new person wanting to make a career in the online world decide on the paths and options on the offer? Honestly, I think it depends on the personality type. If you're creative, the idea of not knowing what that is going to be like, maybe writing an ebook or writing a course, it's unthinkable to you. Even mm-hmm. if you're doing design or web development work, there's a part of you that just wants to go over there and experience that. And that's my personality, and it's probably your personality, especially that your web creative uh, podcast for creative people. Yeah. And so um, I would suggest just like a young person, you might, they might, somebody would say, what do you want to do with your life? And they don't know the answer to that because they have multiple interests. Yeah. Now, interesting about that is that the success rate among creative people is much lower than it is for non-creatives because yeah. of that distractive. If you only can do one thing and one thing well, then you don't have the distractions over here with all of this other noise. And all creative things don't make you money. Like majority of them won't. No, no, but it's the rush of the new design, the new project, the new yeah. thoughts that in- inspire us to do what we do. So if, if, as far as advice goes, I can't tell someone not to be interested in other things if they are, because that advice will fall on deaf ears. Yeah. Because so give it a chance. Finally, a person, you know, came in contact with me and he wanted, like, I want to make money on the internet. Like I said, tell me which, which, what are the ways. And I said, I was a little blank for a second, you know, tell me how many ways, you know what, even it will take me a year to compile all the list. <laughs> because, then I, you know, I went the different way. Instead of telling him what are the ways to make money, I went in like what you are interested in. Are you interested in making videos? Are you interested in audio? Do you design? Do you develop? If he's make, interested in making videos, hey, try YouTube. No harm in it. You know, you need yes. to find the other way around because there are so many ways. Now, I am a designer. I'm a developer. But there are people 
in the similar creative field, but those fields would be unknown to me. Like a person make designing apps or building apps. Now that is a altogether different ecosystem to compare to what I am, even though I'm carrying the same, you know, name tag, yes. developer, designer, blah, blah, blah. But you know, the whole thing is completely different. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, and so you don't want to tell somebody to do what you do, which is natural because we all believe we're doing the best thing or else we choose something else. Uh, and so, yeah. And, and if you don't tell him, tell that person, then, you know, you're hiding something. You have hit some secret gold mine. <laughs> because, no, I'm not, I'm not, because people assume hand, that, you know, making money on internet is easier than making money in the offline world, which is actually not true. Well, yeah, I, I, I think that uh, that phrase, making money, everybody wants to make money. Yeah. But what really what the easiest way to make money is, is to start a business. That's yep. the easiest way to make money because otherwise you're just, okay, we're going to sell stuff from our garage. We made some money. <laughs> we're <laughs> going to get rid of our books online. We made some money. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of ways, but they're not sustainable. They're all just little uh, pieces that are disconnected. So when you create a business, you're creating something that um, connects with other businesses, solves a need, um, performs a service, and that's something that people will pay for on an ongoing basis. So you're making money ongoing. Now, let's talk about the experience part. Now, experience commands a big premium in the online world, even in the offline world as well. How much effort and time should one invest in learning new things and enhancing that experience bucket like how has been your experience in terms of you know learning or investing in yourself uh the originally i took a um, very analytical approach to this mm -hmm. and uh, that didn't work too well because i was always trying to anticipate what i should be learning next and i was going in too many different directions instead i recognized that i have a personality type that has a natural aptitude towards certain things and not towards others so like a tree growing naturally where it's planted, I allow just life experiences and that inward part of you to determine, okay, this is for me or this isn't for me. So I push the analytical part aside and I allowed myself to naturally become me, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Yeah. And it's a fight because your mind is telling you that, hey, if you don't learn that new thing, you're going to be missing out. Yeah. because. If you artificially select that I'm going to learn that thing next, it won't work for you. But if it happens naturally, like I know this, but this is the second step for this type of learning that will yes. you know, resonate and even work for you more. And the other important part besides learning is, you know, your online friends and community. Where should one find his or her tribe in the online world or formal mentorship more ideal when you compare with just interacting in a community with like-minded people? I think they're both important because um, and when you're with a community of people, you're with people that are very similar mm -hmm. in, in tastes and understanding and experience than you are. That's what brought you together to begin with. And so I think that's really good. The bad side of, of, of a community or a group is there's a lot of pressure for everybody to think the same way or to, to hold the same opinions it's just a dynamic of what happens in a group. And so there has to be enough flexibility. But if you look at your own life, and as, as I look at mine, I've been mentored by books. I've been mentored by courses. Um, and I've been mentored by people who weren't even, you know, quote unquote, official mentors or not. And so using this education process, again, as you go through life and you discover more who you are, what you're interested in and where you fit in, then as you get older, it becomes a, a matter of, I need help with specific questions and specific issues. Mm -hmm. And so from that place of lack, you go out and you find somebody who has that kind of insight and that kind of knowledge, and they help close the gap for you. So that's the official side when it's time to find somebody, an individual who understands you and who you feel some type of uh, connection with as far as your communication goes and they can help you get to that next um, spot that you want to go to. You raised a very important point. Now here, normally when you talk about mentorship, you say it's like a person is mentoring you, but 
reading book is also a sort of mentorship you know a book is absolutely you. so even a course is mentoring you like no one actually on a practical level no one actually thinks that way because no one would say a book mentored me they would say i just read a book <laughs> but in the end the end result is kind of similar yes yeah it's the ability to influence someone in a positive way and you can do that through books and audios and courses in many different ways now let's come to micro level like let's go a little deeper now there's so many diverse community platforms on the internet like facebook slack even private forums private memberships big ticket memberships now which is more suited place to discover new options for your business or your new you know way of working on the internet that would be your money making thing on the internet that's a that's a good question i think um again looking from my perspective is that the groups allow you to get answers to questions you would not even think of asking because you're not really even at that place yet but somebody yeah. else is and you're thinking wow i've got information now that i can tuck away for and use months or possibly even years from now i'm aware of problems and bugs and issues with things that haven't even happened but yet i know that they exist now and i know how to fix them ahead of time so that's a, a nice thing to have that's part of the safety where they said there's safety in numbers yeah. that's part of that in, at, at work there but with these different um, platforms, as far as um, was the question about building the business on them or looking, how um, looking for options, like what should I do to, you know, build my business? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And see, that's when it gets very confusing because everybody has an opinion yeah. and, and how it is, especially on video. If you sound like, you know what you're talking about and you sound comfortable you can be totally wrong, yeah. and a lot of people who don't know, who can't you know, weigh it, they'll agree with that. So in a, in a lot of ways, these platforms are terrible for getting the specific information that you're looking for because you may ask the wrong person yeah. or the wrong person may answer. So in that respect, though, we've got, I don't know how much information we can do, find during a search. So I think that there has to be a balance to <laughs> – that and at the end of the day is it right for you deep down on, on the inside because the problem is we're trying to build something and deep inside we know when something isn't a good fit and we're trying to make it fit yeah because we think if we don't do that then it's not right you know and and that pressure to do it like somebody else says it has to be done is always there it, it's you know telling you that do you, do you feel that way? Yeah, even not just for new you know, people, even for people who are there, like, uh, like there's always a pressure to be on every social platform, but I don't feel like doing it. Like, like I am active on Facebook groups, but there was a time when Slack groups were popular, but I always found Slack as a complete waste of time because it's just like a messenger chat. You can't even refer what you, you know, chatted with someone like a week back or a month back, but on Facebook, you can still discover those things. So to each its own, still a lot of people prefer Slack. Then again, it comes the personality aspect of a person, how he wants to consume the information and interact. But then you don't need to be on every platform. You don't need to talk to every other person on, on this planet. It's just you need to find your tribe. And that finding part is not that easy and it won't come that quick. Obviously, you may end up in a wrong community, but then you got to you know, fall down to find out, yeah, I entered some wrong place. Yes. The struggle breakthrough um, uh, is always there. You, you're, you struggle to get from here to there and then you rest when you make it through and then it begins another. Now, this was like for the online communities and all that. What about the offline networking and events? Can they help you decide and enhance your business, online business options? I have to tell you, I've, I have been blessed to have always been around social people. Mm -hmm. That left to my own, I can just stay home with a book. And uh, but I've always had people that have get get out of that chair and get and, and and I've met people I never would have met had those people hadn't made me leave my comfort zone. Because part of the enjoyable thing about working online or working with a computer all day is you don't have to deal with people. Yeah. Um, but the the reality is life 
involves people and and people can be responsible for the best times of your life and, and the worst times <laughs> of your life you know so and you can't have one without the other so you have, you're going to if you want to be out there you're and you want to live and really experience life you're going to have to meet people uh face to face and so i've had people that have connected me with decision makers, influencers. I've met them face to face. And, uh, and it's all happened naturally. When I try to do it with forced networking or going to all of these different things where all these business people get together, nobody's listening. Everybody's talking. Everybody's there to sell their thing. Yeah. That never brought much in terms of results. Just the natural getting out there, meeting people. Um, my girlfriend had an art gallery in town and so on Friday nights we would have these openings and I would send out a press release um, and she would do Facebook and we had a lot of people come there to see a new art ex um, expo I guess you'd call it and uh, I got to meet people that I never would have met because of that social setting so if you have the opportunity to get out there and mm -hmm. meet people then I, I yeah absolutely do it and, and it helps you sell uh, without yeah. selling yeah that cool. that's your decision because on events you will find all kinds of people people who are just there for selling but there are a lot of people who are just there for networking and selling is not even in their mind to be you yeah. know, present on that event so now yes. we've focused on the options like where we can find options online communities offline events now let's talk about tools now tools ecosystem to do things on the internet is mammoth for example just to build a brochure website you have so many tools so many routines like you find every other person and that person will make that same kind of website with a different you know theme platform page builder etc etc now how to make this mind sapping decision of selecting right tools um this is where the group can come in handy because many people have had many different types of experiences with yeah. tools that maybe you're just discovering for the first time. So that's a foundation to, to start with. Um, I had a, a friend of mine who I did uh, partner business stuff with over the years. And I remember I asked him, what do you do when you have all of these options? Because he owned like all these different businesses. What do you do when you really get right down to it and you don't know what choice to make? And he simply said, you just pick one. <laughs> And I thought, but which one? What? <laughs> Doesn't matter. He said, if, if, if he said, if, if you're looking at option one through five and they all are kind of like, and you've done all, you banged your head against the wall, you've read reviews and you've done, you just pick one. He said, life isn't, it, it's not like you're picking a marriage partner and you're going to have to pay alimony to that <laughs> product if it doesn't work out for the rest of your life <laughs> or until somebody else buys it. You just pick one. Yeah, so, out, outcome is not that devastating in terms of picking tools when you're comparing with marriage. <laughs> yeah. Imagine we're distance runners, right? And we're looking at two brand names of sneakers to run for our next race. I can't decide which, which <laughs> brand I should you know, run the, that three mile or we'll, 10 mile. Or... If we can't make a decision, we'll just run barefoot. <laughs> 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 now, my next, next question is kind of, uh, you know, related to what you're saying. Now, after you made the decision that I'll use this tool, the next step is sticking to that decision. Now, I see so many people, you know, jumping tools platform, aka shiny object syndrome. Now, how should one control this shiny urge of not, you know, get attracted by something new? Oh, I'm going to replace my existing tool with this one this has little more shine in it i i think that comes down to wrong belief okay so wrong belief is is based on something that you absolutely positively guaranteed is true but it isn't it's like the four foot two person can't understand why they're not making it in basketball they just don't believe that their height has anything to do with it or the 600 pound sumo wrestler who can't make it as a jockey they just can't understand that they're too big for the horse. So um, when I look at this whole question, it's the belief that the tool is going to give you a significant advantage that you don't already have. 
And so what we're doing is we're buying advantages. We think we're buying progress. Well, we're not buying progress. We're buying a product. Yeah. And it's the belief that that product will give us a significant advantage that we don't already have. For example, you buy an AppSumo thing and you think, you know what? With this, I'm going to be able to offer all of my clients this brand new service. AppSumo is a Pandora box, man. I was reading this yesterday. There was a video like why you shouldn't buy AppSumo deals. (laughs) And that person clearly hit the nail on the head. Like if someone is selling a deal, which is like, instead of $1,000, you'll get it for $29 or $49. You are not actually saving those 1000 minus 49, but you are actually spending that 49. But they are not telling you you are spending 49. They are telling you you are saving 1000 minus $49. <laughs> I mean, the, the game-changing uh, feeling, it's a rush. When you buy a new product, you can now do something you couldn't do before you bought the product. And so it feels like you're making progress. Yeah, but then six months from now, you go browse through your AppSumo section, <laughs> and you'll see exactly how much those products added to your bottom line. Most of them, is- less than ten percent. I'm for me, it's like I, I'm not an AppSumo addict. I just bought one, I think, but my success rate is zero with that also. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I hate to say this, but if you buy, if you use a Google product. Let's say you use Google Analytics without all of the AppSumo programs that use Google Analytics. You use it just as it is. Um, that product isn't going to go away. It's supported by a huge company. Yeah. And so if you learn how to use it as it is, you'll get the same benefit, maybe even more than if you go with this other company that's trying to use that system to make their product maybe something that it quite isn't. Yeah, because... Every tool will have something missing here and there. But as long as the tool is working for you on a foundation level, I think there's no reason for switching. But then you have to switch at some time. Like how, how have you decided like in the past or in the recent, you know, work profiles, you know, work that now it's the time to change the tool. Is there something, some research or like I'm done with this tool? Like I'm being overwhelmed. My friends have a shiny new tool now. I'm <laughs> just like you got the smartphone, finally. Finally. Um, I look at it in two ways. I, I look at it. Number one, the tools don't determine what we're going to build. We determine what we're going to build, and then we go out and find the tools to help us build that. Yeah. Now, I've had been hypnotized, like everybody else has, buy a new tool thinking, my gosh, I might be building the wrong thing. You know, <laughs> now I've been doing that. I, I've asked myself that question. I might be building the wrong thing for 20 years. So there really is no getting around that thought coming and hitting you. But I already know from, from the experience doing it, that um, that's like um, ADD attention deficit disorder, where you're like, trying to do one thing, but you can never focus on getting it really done the way you want because there's this thing over here that keeps knocking on, on your thoughts and saying, hey, look at me. But um, the other thing is, um, the second part of that question, if you have a team, let's take a sports team, let's take soccer, mm-hmm. right? You have different positions on the field and each player in that position is, has a certain task in the game. I look at my tools that way. When a player is no longer performing adequate at their position, they get benched yeah. and a new player is bought in to replace them. Amazing. And, Amazing example, to be honest. And, and, and that's how I look at it now because there are tools. Email is a good example of this. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I told you once that I, I had my own email server. Yeah, And my friend built a mass pro, uh, mailing program. doesn't have any of the bells or whistles, so I abandoned ship. For the last decade, I've been testing different email uh, software programs out, wasting incredible amounts of mental bandwidth, money, and time, and realizing that that position on the field, I, I'm, not, I'm never replacing it with a superstar. I'm just replacing it with a player of similar uh, ability. And so I realized that was a time-wasting activity. Instead, it would be saying, like, you know, should we – Um, should this logo be on the truck over here on the left-hand side or should it be on the right-hand side? 
Well, the bottom line is the truck is used to deliver food or deliver products, <laughs> not to look a certain way. And, and we're majoring on minor things. And so um, eliminating that way of thinking has helped me. If, was it easy to do? Uh, no, because most of the people are still caught up in that um, micro advantages. And that's like the that. human nature as well, because we worry about the small things more. Like we spend more time in figuring out the small things than the, you know, focusing on the major part. Like we're always focused on how would my homepage, we won't worry about the structure of homepage, but we would worry about that blue is not blue enough. That black is yeah. not black, black enough. Yeah, absolutely. I was a, uh, I had a life changing event happen to me. I didn't realize it was going to be that at the time, but it was, I was a tennis player in high school mm-hmm. and uh, we were playing a championship game. I was in playing doubles and I kept double faulting every time my time to serve came up. And I remember we didn't have like ball boys or anything like that. Yeah. We were just a high school team and the ball went rolling over. So I went to pick it up and I walked slowly and everybody was watching because we were the last one. And I said, I'm losing this for my, I'm losing this for my team. And I was so dejected. And my dad walked across the fence because he was there at every game I ever played. And he, I, I got to mention this to him today. When I, see him. I was looking down and I said, dad, I don't, I don't know what to do. And he said this to me, go back to the basics. Mm-hmm. Unless you get the ball in play, you can't win. Yeah, true. And I thought that. And so I, I, all I, my goal was to take the spin off was to take the slice off, was to eliminate all that from serving the ball and just get the ball in play. And when that happened, it changed the whole game and we won. So I've applied that in my life. When things are breaking down, I go back to the basics. And now everything I do is based on less moving parts, less overhead, and less headaches. That's kind of my slogan. Yeah, because... The main thing, like even in our web de- development work, like we are always fighting, you know, this page builder is good, that page builder is good, this theme is good. This, But in the end, you make a site for a client, for that client, it doesn't matter what page builder or which theme did you use. You can even spin a Wix website on it and client wouldn't even know, at least majority of them won't even know about it. So yes. you need to just set like, what is your goal? Your goal is to make a website. Now we've decided on the, you know, tools, the options, how do you piece together this selection of tools and option to build a solid strategy that would help you in possibly succeeding in the business? I think it's like taking an x-ray of a person and seeing the skeleton. <laughs> yeah. If the pieces don't fit at the very core level and you don't understand, this is how we sell, this is how we get our name out there, and this is how we create unless you have these parts in place, everything you build on top will ultimately just sink because it doesn't have the proper, (coughs) excuse me, foundation under it. And now building, selecting your own tools, your own option and building your own strategy is one part. What about emulating and getting inspired from the tool set options of your competitors? Is that a good idea? And inspiration can come from many different places, including that. You but can look it, at what it comes better. most from your competitors. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the thing is, it either fits or it doesn't. Mm-hmm. And that's what, where, where the anguish comes in when you're trying to build something in your business that is not a good fit. And a lot of times, we, it, you know, it would be, I don't know, if I came to you and I said, Defender, I just can't make beaver builder work the way I want it to work what should I do maybe you send a course to me or something like that and I take your beaver builder course and I learn what I need to learn and I'm able to do it but maybe for whatever reason maybe Divi's a better fit yeah you know but I, I'm afraid to tell you that because I'm afraid you'll disapprove because I know you're a you know that's also true <laughs> And, and, and so I, I think sometimes we're not really honest with people when we want their help. You know, we don't tell them, uh, you know, the reason why I, I don't blog is because I hate writing. You know, instead we try and force ourselves to write and, and it's uphill both ways. Um, so you really have to use 
the natural skills that you have. And, and that's where I like to use the word organic. You know, we are all individuals and there's just no accounting for why we're just not good at certain things sometimes. And we have to use the tools that were, that are the best fit for us and not feel guilty about it. Now, the other important part in, in this whole thing is the mental awareness and being well being of a person is very critical in building and executing any business, be it online or offline. So how does Jim stay sound mind wise? Well, for me, I, I am a faith person all the way. That's my foundation. What I mean by that, I'm, I'm uh, God, Jesus, Holy Spirit. That's mm-hmm. how I started out my life as an adult. So <laughs> that approach, I know it's just, some people get turned off when you tell them things like that, yeah. but to be totally honest, that's what I do. I don't have the pressure on myself to create or be or do things. What I basically do is I, I just, Lord, this is what I'm trying to do. Please help me do this. If I'm doing something stupid, please show me what I'm doing wrong. And my desire has changed from making money and, and everything being inward is to use these the God-given talents that I've been given the experience I've been given and be able to make a difference in other people's lives to be the type of person that can be used to really have an impact, really change somebody else's life. That's, that's what motivates me today. And that's what motivates me to um, uh, get through the tougher times because I have a, a belief Mm-hmm. And deep down on the inside that I'm, you know, God's going to lead me and guide me and pick me up when I fall down. And there's a security that I, that I have in that. And I've had it my whole life. When I, when I was 21 years old, or actually 20 years old, um, not, not that long ago. <laughs> I know how long ago. <laughs> I, I, I prayed and I said, Lord, I've got my whole life. Uh, ahead of me. And um, in my teenage years, I tried to do things the way that I thought was a good idea to do them. And the results were horrifically bad. And so I I said, I I want you to lead and guide me in the days, years that are ahead. And uh, to the best of my ability, I'm going to live the kind of life uh, that I believe that I I was created to live. And that is um, to treat other people the way I want to be treated. Uh, we judge people. There's no saying we don't, but yeah. it, I, to be judge people in the measure that I would want them to judge me with, that's the measure that I want to use and to make a difference um, in this world. And so that's my foundation. And that's what I, I go back to when I get off track. Um, because like everybody else, I worry about stupid things. Um, I can micromanage Uh, You know, I can lay there in bed at night and think about things that I have absolutely no control over. Yeah. Um, And, uh, and so that's, that's what keeps me on the, on the solid ground. Let's stick with the same flow and vibe of the discussion. Now, failure go in hand in hand with success. Now, instead of feeling down or feeling low on a failure, where and how does one start with failure analysis process if one exists? You know, um, I've had so many failures. I I rarely talk about them. Um, But at the time, you you I I would interrupt you here. You know what? Even I had so many failures. But if you talk to, you know, if you see a lot of gurus and all that, they would rarely talk about failures because if they talk about failures, they won't be considered gurus. You know? Yes. High ticket people. So uh, this is a very big misconception, like people who are like up there never fell down. Actually, they also fell down. It's just they climbed more stairs than you. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I think we all live in glass houses in a way Yeah. Uh, because of the way technology is today. And um, people see, I mean, if you read a book by an expert and you go to their website, uh, most ex- experts aren't doing their own websites, but you can tell by the datedness that that's no longer their thing. Um, you know, whether it's the promoting of this type of thing, like Kindle books, we're going to teach you how to be rich on Kindle. You go to their site, they're not even doing that anymore, you know? So um, 
you learn a lot from the failures, but it's better that there are minor failures and not catastrophic yeah. failures. I spent the first part of my uh, business life trying to uh, make my family proud of me and the decisions that I, that I made. Um, and then I realized at a certain point that they loved me because I was, I'm because of who I am, not because of what I do. Exactly. And they accept, they accept me because I'm of who, of, I was born into this family, you know, yeah, and you will always be their son, whether you become a CEO of a company or you are even at the staying at the entry level job, it does not matter to them. You will remain their son. And that took a whole bunch of pressure off of me because I was an only child. And so um, they tried eight years before I, I was born. And so I felt enormous pressure to be successful. And eight years of trying that's that's considered as god's gift mind you <laughs> you just can't imagine the mental and physical pressure they've gone through that period. yeah it's 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 only person who's gone through that can actually you know yes share these kind of things it's very hard yeah i, I mean it's nice when your your parents will brag and oh my son was on tv or the radio or whatever <laughs> and, and and but that's for outside yeah. For inside the well, all that matters is that our our relationship is strong. Yeah. For my entire life, our Sunday dinners have remained. I always go there and eat every Sunday. Mm -hmm. When I moved, they followed me down to Florida eventually. And wow. Same thing. My dad and I have had lunch every Monday for like third twenty five years or whatever <laughs> it's been, and uh, and so we've remained uh, close. And and um, my mother told me she said, you know, during your lifetime, if you have five really, really good friends. You're, you're a rich, wealthy person. And so as men, we often define ourselves by our business accomplishments yeah. or, or other things. But the women have it right. It's, it's the relationships that really make you rich or poor, um, whichever way you go. Yeah. Now, let's, again, backtrack to the, you know, person building own business in the online world. Now, if a person fails in building in his own, you know, business in the online world is working for other successful people, other companies, a better path in the interim. You do what you have to do until you can do what you want to do. That's the, what, how I look at it. If you have children or a family to support or a spouse, then you do what you have to do. If it's just you and you're willing to eat like cheap soup every night until you get to where you want to go, uh, you, you can do that. You can do that too. So um, I don't look at it as a failure if you have to go and work for somebody else. Because if this was that easy, everybody would be doing it. And yeah. <laughs> but then nothing is easy in the, even in the offline world. Obviously, people assume online world is easy because they've seen too many photos of people sitting on beach with laptops in their laps and working. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> which, is yeah. not, which is actually not true because you have to sit in a small room. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 the potential of this is huge. It still is today. Yeah. Uh, some people think it's too crowded. Um, it's too no. crowded if you're going to be a carbon copy clone of somebody else. Then yeah. it's too crowded. But um, crowded. There's always a market for something unique, something different. So it's it, it's upon you to you know differentiate from the crowd. Now I'm going to ask you a very general, very broad question. Now according uh, to you, where do you where do you think most people fail trying to build their career in the online world? I don't think they know what they're building. I think they're just trying to make some mm -hmm. money. And yeah. so there's no real plan. There's no real, this is the first step we take. This is the second. This is what it's going to look like. And so um, I encourage people to practice or learn about what's called backwards planning. Where you start with the end result in mind. And then you take one step back. What was the step that happened that made that last step possible? And then you go all the way back. And you, what you're left with is a clearer, more concise plan to get from where you are right now to where you want to be uh, tomorrow. They've used this backwards planning for the last 60 years in politics, military, 
um, all over the world. It just ha- never got really popular outside of the um, psych- psychology and, and that type of community. It never became that popular in business. But uh, that's, it works. It works really well because it eliminates all of these little, you know, oh, here's 20 tools. What can we build with them? <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm I'm gonna give a plug to you here. Like people who are listening to this podcast, you must be wondering why Jim is so clear about these things because he is a coach in this very topic, which is business coaching. So, in case you are lost <laughs> and you want more, go to his website jimgiliani.com, and you will find lots of. Especially, you will find lots of interesting blog post articles and most of them are like geared toward like business success failures you know yes paths, and it's 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 really insightful you know because a lot of people try to build their business whether online or offline but they fail at doing the basic things first and they worry about the finer end tail things which actually don't matter in the beginning yes absolutely thank you I, I didn't want to do this either. It just happened. People said, okay, can I pay you to coach me or consult with me? And uh, that's how I You know what? Here. Even I didn't want you to do online consultation coaching, but I've been doing it for two years, even though I don't, even you have like a page for that. I don't even have a page for that on a website because I don't want to get in, you know, in, inundated with it. Like I do like one or two coaching calls every week and that's enough for me. But I love, you know, teaching people and it's it it comes from inside if you don't love it you actually can't do it and you know because yes. some, sometimes if you are if you're trying to force yourself and teach someone you will feel a little burnt down you know okay i'm done with answering same questions again and again <laughs> <laughs> so we now, are very patient so you're almost a natural you just have to do it with a group not individuals yeah to each its own you know everyone has its different structure so Let's talk about your online toolbox now. So what are your oh, finally five, <laughs> what are your five current favorite tools that power I've your business? I've been chomping at the bit for a whole hour to get to this part. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about this last night. He's going to ask me. <laughs> you know, a lot of a lot of listeners have given me this feedback. They love this section of the you know episode because they want to discover something new, you know, and get that shiny object syndrome back in their heads and try something new. Hey, Jim is using this, so I should also use it. <laughs> hey, you know what? It's like I've been in the movie. It's like the smoker in the movie theater. They can't wait to get out and get that first cigarette. Right? <laughs> I've been waiting the whole podcast to light this up. <laughs> um, okay, so. <laughs> Let me start with RoboForm. RoboForm is an unsung hero of my business. Matter of fact, one of the players on the field, one of the most valuable players, that just gets the job done over and over and over again. Is I it have probably, an online hosted form solution? Yeah, it's just like LastPass. Okay. And um, But it's called RoboForm. Mm-hmm. And uh, so all of my, uh, like, uh, 10 million logins for <laughs> all these different things and bookmarks and <laughs> everything like that. Th- this product, as long as this product remains, um, I will be using it. So that's RoboForm. You can get it at RoboForm.com, I think. Um, number two, Google Analytics. You got to dig deep. And I think that Google Analytics gives you more information than you need, really, but it enables you to um, remove the guesswork yeah. And to really see what's happening. The negative side is you can start micromanaging your statistics and think, oh, Wednesday hasn't been good the last month. What, what, are, what are we doing wrong? You know, it could just have nothing to do with anything that you've done. It's just that it's, it's like the weather, you know, the weather changes from day to day. Number three, SERP stat. SERP stat is, tells me all of the, and believe it or not, Yes, this was a my hat off to AppSumo for this one. <laughs> um, one success. Sir, finally. <laughs> one out of 40 isn't bad. Um, SERPstat will show you what's linking in, what's not. Um, and it will really give you some incredible amount of data that if you're consulting for people, you can actually show them hard information that's really tough to argue with about where they're, what they're doing, uh, behind the scenes, what the, what the motor looks like, um, what people are, are, where they're spending their time, where they're going to. So I would list that as 
number three. Number four, which I told you about probably two months ago, was Voo Player. Yeah. Voo Player I use for all of my courses because I know exactly how much time somebody's actually spending on a video and when they're clicking off. So if I put a whole course together, I know that, okay, this is too long because only 80% of uh, the video is being watched by like 90% of the people and here's where they're disconnecting. And so I can go back and make a better version of that. Plus it does all kinds of other things like uh, analytics and everything for video. So there's that. Number five, short pixel. Short pixel has just um, changed the way I think about image optimization. You just put the plugin in, it's a software as a service. Mm -hmm. When you upload your stuff to clients' sites, it just goes and starts doing everything that it needs to do. It creates a backup version. So for some reason, you know, you think, oh, this image looks horrific when yeah. it's optimized this much. Um, you can go back and undo it and <coughs> tweak it or however you want to do it. That's number, well, that's number five. <laughs> can, I, can I say one more? <laughs> sure, go ahead. More the better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the deposit photos deal, the $99 yeah. for 99 images. That's amazing, uh, actually. Uh, just when you need the right image, and it just keeps getting better. You know, I hate to say this, but I'm not really sure their business model is the best business model because once somebody pays $99 for 99 photos, the chances of them paying full price or ever wanting to pay full price again is almost Zero. non-existent. Zero. Zero. They're going to wait, you know, Years until <laughs> ninety nine dollar one. But a lot of people, you know, most of the uh, most of these people who buy this are like the agency owners who build a lot of sites for people, so they actually stack up the deals. So it's just like bulk selling for them. So yeah, 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 yeah. I guess they're still in business, so I guess it works. Yeah, yeah. And you know, oh. the thing about software is, if there is money in a particular type of software, mm -hmm. big company comes in and they dominate the the field. It's like Mailchimp with email. Yeah. Um, and MailChimp is so huge that it really doesn't make sense unless you've got funding to come in and try and compete with that. And MailChimp actually works and it's solid and it's, it has a very good uptime. It won't disappoint you, at least what it promises at. It may not have all the fancy, you know, targeting features like ConvertKit or Drip would have, but whatever it has, it works beautifully. Absolutely. And, and local businesses can use it for, I mean, Free. most local, yeah, they don't, they're not going to get over 2000 subscribers on their local list. And even if they get over it, the pricing isn't something that you, that will make that business poor because, you know, they can easily absorb the cost because when they have more email lists, they will also get return on, you know, sending those emails as well. So there's mm. always a return on, you know, spending for even a pro account at MailChimp. So what is your recommended web hosting service? Website managers.net. Um, it used to be called. It. No, it's a local company. Okay. Um, my friend bought it. Uh, he was the head uh, technical CTO. I thought WP, WP Engine was a local company in US. It probably is. <laughs> <laughs> Website managers.net used to be Pagematic. My, my friend bought it. Uh -huh. um, and uh, it's a family run business, but um, it's big enough where um, they get the job done and I can just call them on my phone and say, Hey, can you check this out? And uh, they have reseller plans. They have the same plans everybody has. Everybody basically has the same plans. But if you want to get a reseller plan, they, um, you know, like if you assign maybe, I don't know four gigabytes of space mm -hmm. to a client account and they're only using one megabyte <laughs> or no, that's not, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, 500 megabytes. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're using 500 megabytes and they've got all this excess. They don't count that against your total. Mm -hmm. They only count what's actually being used. So even if you assign a whole bunch of space to everybody, it doesn't eat up your reseller account. Only what the people are using. Most local businesses don't use, um, that much space when you get right down to it mm -hmm. unless they're art galleries yeah um, the photo in intensive sites otherwise normal business brochure sites won't have that many photos max no. 20 30 photos per site no more than that i use cloudways also for my own site mm -hmm. um 
you know, just the, the I'm doing business with somebody in Malta. You know, that's where, <laughs> something just feels yeah, right about that. They are just, <laughs> I think they are registered in Malta, but, but they are, I think, based in Pakistan to what I understand, but I could be wrong here. Yesterday only I saw someone uh, make a video comparing Cloudways with SiteGround and Flywheel. And their biggest grouse with Cloudways was their rude tech support people. <laughs> but I, I, I personally use SiteGround. I've never, you know, used, I've never used Cloudways. I've heard good things about it. It's just, I, you know, I don't want to get into, I don't have time to, you know, migrate. Simple. I have reseller uh, accounts and, and, and other types of servers that I have. <clears throat> you can probably have to edit this out of the video, but um, I, I actually have some sites on HostGator still. And I don't this, have any, I don't, this would be a good promo for the video. No, I'm not going to edit. <laughs> and I don't have any problem with them. And, what? And, you have HostGator? Come <laughs> on, man. You need to be smart. And have you got smartphone? You're still using... <laughs> It could be worse. I could say Bluehost. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, there's a bunch. But you know what? I'm in. I'm in same company. Do you? Do you know? Uh, I also use similar kind of hosting for last twelve years, and I've never deactivated my account, which is called DreamHost, which is one of their cousins. You yes, know, yeah. they all are owned by one company. And to be honest, I never had a problem. It's. It's. I think my twelfth year running with DreamHost. Like I have less. Less important small websites in there and they are there and they work it's okay yeah. and it hardly costs me like 120 dollars per year which is you know nothing you know but and, yeah. and it holds my five six websites which which is amazing and it works yeah it goes down sometime which is fine man everything goes down on the web sometime yeah. or the other it's just you want to make even netflix <laughs> <laughs> mm. okay so and that's about using hosting. Now let's talk about what you use to build things. Like, do you like Vivo Builder, Elementor, Thrive, Divi, Oxygen, Breezy? Oh man, the list is big. So in summary, bottom line, I'm asking you, which page builder you use? You know, uh, um, I was watching some uh, a video on body language and I noticed um, one of the things that you just did when you, when you said Elementor, your eyes shifted to the left. <laughs> 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 um, I I really enjoy uh, Beaver Builder. Now um, my eyes will be straight. <laughs> you know, I, just, I I enjoy using Beaver Builder. Um, you know what? Divi, if it worked right, would be like the ultimate page builder. Exactly. I always said they great designers, they great have, community. They have a lot of features, but problem is most of the features don't work. That's the only problem. <laughs> I hate when that happens. <laughs> It's like a Swiss army knife, but only two blades come out. Um, Mind you, they are the most revolutionary people to build a page builder. It's just they couldn't get the quality of things right, but yeah. their, their intentions were absolutely right. They could have killed every other page builder if the features they promised actually worked, to be honest. Yeah. Eventually, they may get it. And yeah. uh, I only pay $19 a year. That's how long I've been with them. <laughs> For for that, so I'll keep paying the nineteen dollars in hope. Um, but um, I bought Elementor because I wanted to. Um, all right, because I believe the shiny object. I got into it because of that. But I'm glad I did because I like the page builder part, the part where you can you know do your custom um, template changes like the header footer and, and that kind of thing. It's basically their, their answer to think your eyes are starting to go over to the left. Again. <laughs> uh, it's basically the uh, answer to, um, I'm listening. The, I'm listening. The, I'm, I'm, the I'm, I'm watching. I'm listening. Beaver themer. Yeah. It's their answer to themer. Yeah. So, so I don't think anybody can go wrong with. Yeah. Um, they've, they've, they've launched something similar to Beaver themer elemental people and they've bundled it within the main plugin whereas yeah. Beaver Themer is a separate add-on which is an expensive add-on but once you know what it does that money is well worth spend yeah yeah so so um I don't think anybody could go wrong with with either of those my neighbor dog has started barking even he likes Beaver Themer <laughs> 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 
But you know, the problem about this jumping around from thing to thing is you never really learn anything in a deep way. Yeah. I mean, yesterday I was using uh, PowerPoint to do a, uh, put a webinar together and I found a feature that I never even knew was in there. And I didn't know it was in there because I just jumped. I didn't spend the time. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been using that for like two decades now. And, uh, and that just goes to show that if you just stick with a certain set of tools uh, and really learn what they do and why they do it and how they do it and become comfortable with them, your productivity can like really increase very, very quickly. Okay, let me add some shine to your shiny object syndrome now. Any okay. upcoming tool or service that has caught your eye recently? Yeah, your um, Black Friday page. Oh, uh, man. Where, where, I, where was that? What was the, what's the URL for it? Okay, now that's a good promotion for me also. But I think by the time this episode goes out, the Black Friday would be over. But still, smartwebcreators.com slash BF. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. So um, I, I had to look at it uh, because I saw you um, had that little graphic up with all of the um, Black Friday deals in the group that you put there. None of them really caught my eye yet where I thought, oh, I got to get that. Yeah. None, none of them really have. Actually, so, I didn't share any new tool in there. It's mostly the tools that I use or I know that these tools are good because I know their developers and all that. Because that's that's my focus. I I won't share every tool under the sun because, to be honest, you know, not just tool should be good. The person behind that tool, you got to know that person also to some extent. Because now, if you talk about Beaver Builder, I know who are Beaver Builder people who have made it. They are very honest about it. They are yes. clear about it. They know it it works. They also know which things don't work, and they are ready to accept it. Yes. So that matters a lot. So. You know what I got to put into about the Beaver Builder, um, mm -hmm. the new rows that are coming in that, that Paul uh, Lacey Paul, is building. Yeah. To me, that is, that is really, really, um, that, that's, that's a huge boost to the product. Yeah, that will help the new people coming into the ecosystem because for I, I get this question asked a lot. You know what? I made two rows. How do I make them three now? Like when you have the pre-made stuff, they can easily, you know, and those pre-made rows are not like fancy rows. They are like basic layouts, which you can put in your, you know, template and you can then customize according to your needs. And it's all about speed now. I mean, even if you're building a huge site, you know, why take, uh, you know, 20 minutes to do something when you can do it in five, you know? So. Yeah, exactly. You know, you should use tools that fits you. Now, when I, I started my course, a lot of people said, hey, you, you are a WordPress person. Why the hell you are using Teachable? You know what? I, I, I have used Lifter LMS, Learn Dash. I've set up client sites using that. They work perfectly fine. But there are so many moving elements and I don't yeah. have time to manage those elements. And when it's money, you got to keep things secure. Now, if I use a hosted platform like Teachable, I don't have to do or worry about anything. The only thing I have to worry about is create content. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's the type of, that's how you have to think um, when you're trying to get from here to there, because you have a limited amount of time, you have a limited amount of, of, of mental focus available. Um, you got a lot of things working against you in, as far as distraction goes. And yeah. You've... And I think we've breached a one hour mark. So we'll just Wrap it, wrap the episode here. So any last message that you want to give for a person who's distracted and want to focus on the tools and options to build an online empire and become the next Steve Jobs, maybe? <laughs> I, I would say that, um, and, and this is going to be counterintuitive, but spend a lot of time mastering the basics. Mm -hmm. So whether that's taking courses that teach you the basics of what you want to do, or reading ebooks that go over that, or hiring a coach or mentor to really work with you to get those things nailed down. Nothing works until you understand the, and have that foundation in place. Take it from me. I, I started out by, I want to make some money online. I jumped in a lot of different areas. I got distracted a lot. And uh, so that's not what you want to do if you want to get to where you're going quicker. You want to get the, that, that foundation in place. Absolutely. Solid advice. 
Okay, Jim, it was amazing talking to you. Have a it was day. great talking to you. We'll have, have a- to do this again someday, even if it's not on the show. <laughs> I will still record it. Have a good day. <laughs> All right. Bye.